Hello everybody, welcome to Marketing Analytics course. This is Dr. Shagadha Chatterjee from Vijiso IIT Kharagpur who is taking this course for you. And this particular class which is in week 9, last session we will discuss about survival analysis in case of customer chart. So, what is survival analysis? So, you will see that this is a survival probability curve. So, it is actually talking about that every time period if you are pre, if you are alive today what is the probability that you will be alive tomorrow what is the probability that you will be alive day after tomorrow and so on two days later three days later four days later so how much is the probability that over a certain period of time your, uh, you you will be alive and and this is something which is important to know because certain times it is in the context of let's say uh, customer uh, lifetime calculation that part I will take as my customer lifetime this is something matters. So, survival probability you see that initially 80 percent of uh, guys survive beyond 7 years and then at this point which is the green point and the, uh, it is 50 percent of guys who is surviving after uh, 8 years. So, area under the curve is basically the expected survival time. So, if I can give you information like this that the probability the probability that you your you will your lifetime lifetime L is greater than T if I can give this particular probability that what is the probability that your lifetime will be greater than T. So, that is particularly this particular graph. So, that is that is something that I am giving and then T into this thing summation of that or in this case integration of that if by chance if it is uh, if it is uh, 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 continuous distribution that is basically the, your expected lifetime. So, expected lifetime. So, if I can by chance get this particular probability if I can be find out what is the expected lifetime then that is something that I can use for customer lifetime value calculation because you see that whether I can do will do the calculation for 5 years or 6 years or 10 years what is the value that I will do is sometimes come from here this kind of an analysis but how much you are considering as expected lifetime. So, there are various other case where this particular things apply. For example, it can also be applied that how much will be the time taken before you die if you have coronavirus let us say. So, in, in certain cases it is much low, in certain virus cases it is much low, in certain viruses cases it is much high or how much time will this particular thing, uh, uh, the, what, what will the probability. So, let us say in, in general we have a probability of living up to 60 years, 70 years, 80 years. But given that you have this particular uh, disease, what is the probability that you will live and how that changes, how that probability changes over time. So, let us say if there are two curves which looks like this, this is for probability, this is time, this is for curve 1, this is for curve 2 which is group 1 and group 2. You will say that as time increases, as you get gets older, your probability of living comes down obviously. But for C1 group of customer who let us say are cancer patients are much lower than people who are not cancer patients and, and here the ratio is the odds ratio or not exactly odds ratio the hazard rate hazards ratio is much less and here it is much higher let us say. So, once you get aged the impact of cancer on your probability of living is much much higher and that is something that we sometimes want to see. Now, in this case it is not cancer we are talking about customers. So, given that there is some service failure the older customers will be having higher chance or the loyal customers will have higher chance to stay back and non loyal customers will be ha having higher chances of going away. So, if I can get find out that loyalty curve and you can, you can find out that what are the various aspects which impact your decision of staying surviving as a customer or not surviving as a customer or staying in this particular company or not staying in a particular company then that can be analyzed using using this survival analysis techniques. So, what are the key issues? The key issues are so how the likelihood of a customer churn changes over time and determine the potential intervention point. So, at what point you should intervene and questions if it can answer is how many years months on an average do the customer stay. So, if I do not do anything by how many time how much 
will leave the customer in my service. And how long do male customers stay compared to female customers? So, is there any difference between gender? Is there very difference between nationality? Is there any any difference between one customer group and another customer group? So, this is something that I can try to find out using uh, this particular technique. And is our understanding of customer life cycle accurate with reality? So, this is something that I can also try to find out that whether whatever we understand about the customer life cycle is this the case also. So, survival regression allows us to apply a model to the survival analysis to predict when an event is likely to occur. So, these are basic issues in which this particular analysis technique works. What are the key issues? What we can do with it? So, we can model the relationship between customer churn, time and other customer characteristics. This is something that we can do. And we can also question, answer this kind of question that what is the probability that this customer who is a female non-senior citizen with dependents will stay for 2 years and what are the significant factors that drive churn, this kind of answers I can give. So, there are basically the lots of applications in telecommunication, this is a huge application. It has application in insurance, mortgage, mail order catalog, retail. Uh, manufacturing and public sector. So, there are lots of places where it has a, so for instance manufacturing it has a application is lifetime of machine components in public sector it is time intervals to critical events in retail time till food customer start purchasing non food and so on. Now, we have two estimation techniques one is Kapler Meyer which is very basic which says that the probability of staying back is nothing but the probability of leaving given that you have left the first time. So, it is saying that every time period the factor that you will be living in time period 2 is independent of whatever was your probability that you will be living in time period 1. But, so switching, so from time period 1 to time period 2 this switch will not depend on the probability of time period 0 to time period 1. So, that is something that they are saying that you will survive from time period 0 to time period 1 has no impact that you survive that you will time period 2 given time period 1. But it is also saying the maths is also saying that the probability if they are not independent then the probability that you will survive time period 2 is time period 0 to 1 into time period 1 to 2 fair enough probability of 1 is probability of 0 to 1 this transition stage transition probability of 3 in that case is probability of 0 to 1 into probability of 1 to 2 and then probability of 2 to 3 this state transitions. So, then probability of t is basically probability of t minus 1 into probability of t minus 1 to t this state transition will happen. So, then if I go on doing this maths then probability of t is nothing but probability of t minus 1 into 1 minus dj by nj what is dj? dj is number of deaths at that time period and nj is total number of people. So, that is what this particular formula is saying. If you check this formula, this formula is saying that that st that your survival rate is nothing but survival rate at t minus 1 into 1 minus dj by nj. So, that is the formula dj is number of deaths. So, this is the probability of being dead 1 minus that this is probability of being remaining alive. So, the probability that you remain alive up to j minus 1 j minus 1 th time into j th time periods probability of remaining alive is the probability that you will be alive till j th time period enough and then the hazard rate is the change of this death rate nothing but the change of log of this rate by log because this this is a probability which is very small number 0. 0.0000 something if you take log it becomes a little bit of handleable log likelihood we used to take that's why that if you take log this 0. 0.001 becomes 10 to the power minus 6 so log of 10 to the power minus 6 is basically minus 6 that minus 6 number is still handleable than 10 to the power minus 6 which is a very small number. So, this is called hazard rate that rate of change of log of likelihood of survival rate of change minus ddt 
of log of log of what log of survival rate. So, survival rate is basically probability of surviving. So, that is some thing it is a non parametric method we can calculate and then we can calculate between two groups and show that one group has higher hazard rate than other group. So, one groups rate of survival drop is much steep other group is not so steep if that is the case then I can say that these two groups are different. Another method is basically Cox proportional hazard method which is say that this hazard rate is not only dependent on time, but also dependent on many other factors and this x 1 x 2 are th those factors. So, instead of two groups you can take multiple groupings like age, gender, income together and say that all of this impacts the hazard rate. So, all of this impacts the rate in which you will drop. So, in general your probability of living third year, fourth year, fifth year is this much, but if you have from higher income group your hazard rate is much lower than a lower income group. In lower income group the probability of surviving over some number of years drops in a much steeper way, drops in a much steeper way. So, which looks like this if I normally the probability of living at certain time period is high at 0 time period. Slowly as you go on aging the probability gets dropped fair enough this is the probability of living this is time slowly it goes down makes sense. If I if you are a age of 95 the probability that you will live 96 years is much low goes down, but this going down rate if it is average for rich people and educated people and informative people this is this and for poor people it might be a little bit much lower than that. So, this this is the change the change is much steeper here the change is much flatter. So, th this case in the lower case the hazard rate if I say h 1 in the upper case if you say h 2 h 2 is much lower than h 1 the hazard rate is lower. So, that is something that I am trying to say here that if the hazard rate is lower or the ratio of hazards is lower than 1 then the, there is a reduction of hazard if the other case there is an increase of hazard. So, there are two hazard functions that we find out and then we try to check that the hazard ratio we try to find out and you can read from this particular link about more about the survival analysis, but I will just quickly show a, a study which is for which you have to open this serve.r file. So, there are four libraries I call the library you have to install these libraries before if you do not have them and the data that I will be using is basically the ovarian data it is ovarian cancer data already inbuilt in us and if you want to have a glimpse of this data it has 26 observations of 6 variables and this guy is the foot time, foot f u stat, age, the, resi uh, the residence r x and eco g. So, these are various kinds of factors which impact the chances of living and this is the age and this is f u stat and the whether this guy is living or death 1 0 and the time period and what time stamp this measurement has been done is something that they are checking. And the help of the description of this information will come here. So, you can uh, so, you, ca you can get uh, all the details what is this. So, if time is the survival of or censoring time when you are measuring, this is the censoring status, this is age in years of uh, and then this is basically residual disease pres uh, present 1 is yes, 2 is no. So, 1 is no, 2 is yes, this treatment group or uh, uh, control group and eco g is the performance status. These are some of the things that they are checking. So, what first do I do is I put these groups R x groups into two groups A and B. So, 1 and 2 I make them factor and label them as A and B. Similarly, ovarian residual the death status is 1 yes or no and then this one is good and bad. So, eco g condition is good and bad is something that we are changing. So, 1 and 2 and etcetera we are recoding and now if I just plot the age this is the A. So, it seems like uh, there are bimodal two modes are there it might be uh, that that is something that uh, this particular thing is being shown. 
Then what I am doing is, I am changing this ovarian data set, I am muted, muted means it will change and put something here. For age group is, if the age group is higher than 50, then it is old, otherwise it is young. So, I am creating a new variable in this. So, which is basically ovarian age group, which is old and new, I have created and make them factor. Now, what I am doing? I am creating a survival data set. So, serve object is survival data set time is equal to the time when you are measuring and event is the few stat. So, that is the death or, uh, or, or, or alive that particular thing. So, I have created the serve object which is basically a numeric variable uh, which is looks like this 59, 150 and plus or not plus is actually telling that whether it has survived or not. And then, if I just feed it with Rx, so for two Rx A and B, it will be separately creating the charts. And if I put the summary, what it is doing, you just carefully see. First of all, it is breaking the data set for Rx is equal to A and Rx is equal to B. Two separate groups it is creating, two separate groups it is creating, Rx is equal to A and Rx is equal to B. And then what it is doing is that it is saying that what are the various time periods when some event occurred? When time period was 59, there was 13 people are there in RxA and only one event means one died and then 12 were there. So, 12 by 13 was the probability from time 0 to, 0 to time period 1. 12 by 13 comes out to be 0.923. Then in 115 time period, there were 12 people, another death happened. So, 11 by 12 was the death survival rate. So, what was the S2? S2 is S1 into 11 by 12, that means 0 0.923 into 11 by 12. If you do the calculation, it will come as 0 0.846. And slowly they went on calculating the survival rates. Same thing they did for Rx is equal to B also. Now, if I just plot it, you will know that this is how the plots look like with probability 0.3, they are different. And if I just zoom it up, you will see that. Rx equal to A looks like this, Rx equal to B looks like this. Can you tell me which one has higher hazard rate? Obviously, the graph which is at the top has the higher hazard rate. So, Rx equal to B has much less, sorry, lesser hazard rate, the one at the top. So, Rx equal to B has much lesser hazard rate than Rx equal to A. And but on the other hand, P is equal to 0.3, this states, tests that whether these two are significantly different or not. P lower than 0 0.05, they are significantly different p higher than 0 0.05, they are not different. So, as per my statistical analysis, at least I can say that these two are not very different. If I do the same thing for reci.ds and then plot it, now it is 0 0.057. So, at least at 6 percent level, they are different, if not 5 percent level. And see, when reci.ds is no, less survival rate when it is yes, very high survival, very, very high hazard rate, very much less survival rate is something that we can see here, at least based on the data that we have. So, till now we were doing the first method. In the second method, in the Cox proportional hazard model, we can actually have multiple. So, it is the summation of beta xx and you have to, the equation is given in this particular, uh, the, uh, in the, in the, in our in our PPT and from there you can will understand that what this mean. So, I am just plotting it. So, if I just run this much and see what this fit dot cox ph say, it is giving the f coefficient beta coefficients value there uh, sorry this is the beta coefficients value for R x b and corresponding standard error of the coefficient and then corresponding z values of the coefficient and then it is also given the p value of the coefficient. So, these three has effect R x, resid ds and age group by young has effect. The ecological condition has no effect. So, I could have dropped that in the model. So, by two ecological condition is not creating any different hazard rate for the groups. And if I just plot the gg forest, this is how it looks like you would see that from R x A and B, when I am saying R x A and R x B, two groups, this guy has, uh, if keeping this as reference, the hazard ratio is 0 0.25 and significant level is 0 0.032. So, this is significant. Uh, 
On the other hand, hazard keeping receipt DS as reference, no, the ES is 4.25 and the it is upper limit and lower limit and it is also significant, very highly significant. Okay. And then if I say that old, uh, this so, so that means here I am saying that the group B 0.25 means hazard ratio less than 1, less than 1 means group B is less uh, affected. I would say the, the keeping everything else constant, group B will have lower hazard ratio than group A. How much lower? 4 times lower I would say. So, ratio will be 1 by 4 and that is significant and here it is 4.25 by 1 and that is also significant. Here it is 0.1 by 0 0.11 means basically uh, this ratio means 1 by 9. So, the young people has much less hazard ratio than old people. I am not giving this example in the context of uh, in the context of uh, our uh, customer behavior, but similar data you can create from the customer behavior also. And for ecoji, the bad is 1.8 means by chance this ecoji is bad, you will have 1.8 times hazard ratio than when it is good, but this is not significant. So, I can probably ignore this result. I can I have to consider this result this result and this result because in all the cases this is lower than 0 0.05, but in this case I can probably ignore. So, that is how we can create survival analysis. This is highly applicable in checking that how much time a customer will be staying with me or how much time I can when I can do the intervention, which kind of intervention reduces the hazard rate. So, like here we are saying that whether Rx or age or something else is impacting the hazard rate. You could have seen that, let us say if, in, if customer lifetime is your uh, value that we are checking and every time period after 2 months, 3 months, 5 months, 6 months, whether the customer were there with you 1 or 0, that was your hazard rate calculation. Then you could have find out that what impacts your hazard rate. You did some intervention in January, the customer is still alive on September you did another intervention on May, you, this is also staying back in September, which one has an impact? The intervention in January or intervention in May, which one actually made the customer to stay back? You do not know until and unless you do this Cox analysis. So, Cox has a nozzle analysis. So, that is how we can also find out that how to calculate exactly the customer lifetime and how to increase customer lifetime. One is churn management, but churn is an immediate management. Sometimes you have to do something much ego so that the lifetime increases. So, how to do that, which one will impact, which one will not impact can be done using Cox proportional hazards model. You can try out for other customer data. You can try out a churn data uh, from, from your uh, customer databases and try out whether that can be applicable here. So, that is where I will uh, stop week 9. In week 10, we will start text mining, text analytics and etcetera. Thank you very much for being with me. I will see you in the next week. Thank you.